everybody, Richard Fergola here from Fergalicious Barbecue and right here at Proud Souls Barbecue and Provisions in Kansas City, Missouri. And I've got a great video today. I'm gonna share my competition award-winning rib recipe with my friend, world champion football player, George Karloftis from here in Kansas City. It's gonna be great. Excited to be back here at Proud Souls with the one and only Fergalicious. Yeah. Uh, so I heard we're, we're gonna make some ribs today and I'm really excited. I know that's your specialty, just like mine is playing football, sacking the quarterback. I can't, I can't wait for you to to teach me how to do that, great, you know? You know, I don't give out my secrets too often. I mean, normally I make people pay for that, but since it's you, I'll, I'll teach you how it's done, brother. Awesome, I can't wait. All right. All right, George, here's what you came for today, baby. Okay. We're gonna do some ribs. We're gonna do some competition style ribs. And to do a good competition style rib, you gotta use the best in the business, and that's Prairie Fresh. Prairie Fresh is actually, uh, a, the company's called Seaboard, which is right out of Kansas City here. Okay. Um, and this is what we call the all natural rib, which we sell here at Proud Souls. Mm. And the reason why we use this rib, and I'm gonna show you this right now when I open this up, is people always ask, Ferg, how do you cook such good ribs? And the, wow. the reason why I cook such good ribs is because of that right there. Oh yeah. Wow. All that marbling, all that intermuscular fat, that is what we want because fat is flavor. Mm. And these are nice and thick. It's a really thick rib. Right. And, and just for the people at home, and, and uh, I don't know how many slabs of ribs you've cooked, but this is a, this is a spare rib, but it's cut down to a St. Louis. Yeah, so these are these are what we call a pork spare rib, and a full spare rib is gonna have the breastbone out here that, so you cut this off, and that's what we call a St. Louis style rib. Okay. So right now we've got a St. Louis style rib, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim this up competition style, okay. and the very first thing we're gonna do, the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some of these end bones off. So we've got these end bones here that have this extra fat on it. Yeah. So we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna trim that part off, and we're gonna keep everything straight, all right? So we cut all that fat off, all right? Now we squared that up a little bit, and now we're gonna kinda do the same thing here, and we're finding this bone, and we're just gonna take our knife, and we're just gonna come down in here, and we've gotta oh, get wow. good pressure, and then we're kinda holding this whole slab of ribs together as I'm bringing this knife through, and it really helps to have a nice, strong, um, strong blade, sharp, and we're gonna kinda square that up a little bit. And one of the reasons why we do this in competition is because we want this rib to cook evenly, right? Mm. And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna try to find a thin spot and we're gonna come through here and we're gonna trim that off. All right. And now we've now we've squared this, this slab of ribs up. I'm just gonna go one more time here. Any questions so far? No man, this looks <laughs> this, this is a science, man. I mean, it this is. is this it is. is. So now we're, see, now we're squared up. Now we got a little bit of this flat meat, so we're gonna turn this towards us and we're gonna kinda pull this up with our fingers. Okay. And then we're just gonna kinda, as I'm running the blade through, I'm kinda pulling this towards me. Cause you just want it as even as possible. Yep, I want that flat. And so, and you can see I'm keeping my blade flat and I'm just trimming that off until we get to where we're at there. Now it's clean, okay? We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna kinda look what we got here. And a lot of times we'll have, you may have some fat deposits there, you may have some right here. So. What we'll do is we'll kind of we'll kind of pump this up just a little bit, and we're going to kind of we're not digging in there, but we're just trying to get some of those bigger fat deposits out. Why is that? A lot of times they won't render, mm. so they'll just be a big white spot on your rib, gotcha. and we want to we want to get rid of that. Now this is the cool part. Like I was excited to show you here is a lot of people don't realize in competition how how detailed we get in trimming. Yes. So I use scissors a lot when I'm doing ribs. And so I'll come through here and I'll trim off this excess right here above the bone. Oh my goodness. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting this extra meat and extra fat that's right above the bone. So when it starts to cook, it's gonna have a better appearance to it is what I'm, what I'm right. going for. Cause those bones will start to pull away. And I'm just gonna basically go around this whole slab of ribs. And I'm basically, I'm just evening, I'm evening everything up. A lot of times the bones can do what we call blow out. Mm -hmm. So as they cook and this renders, the bones can come out. And if they do that and you go to take a bite, all that meat can come off. You wanna have a bite. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving this top part on to kind of hold it together. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of push this, this membrane to get it popped off here, just like that. And then yeah. once I do that, I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna flip this guy around. I'm getting my finger underneath it. And then when I get a hold of the, with the paper towel, I'm gonna start to work this thing off and I'm gonna get it to this where I just scored it. And then once I get it there, I'm gonna turn this guy over. I'm gonna re-grab it with my paper towel. Pull it off. And just pull that off just like that. So now, this is gonna hold it together. A judge isn't gonna take a bite up here. Right. They're gonna take a bite down in here where all this meat is, right? Mm. So now that we've got our ribs kind of trimmed out, you can see we got a nice even That's perfect. slab. That's perfect. Right, now we're gonna season it, all right? We 
we've got them rubbed. Yes. A lot of people ask, you asked me this earlier, when do we put the, when do we do this? When do we put the rub on? Yeah. A lot of people think you gotta put it on the day before. I do this about an hour before it goes on the That's pit. That's it. Yep. We do this about an hour before, we're gonna let it sit right here. We're gonna let it, what we do call, it's called a sweat. And the salts in the rubs are gonna bring the moisture out of the rib. It'll start to get a wet look on there. And that's when we know it's sweating. That's when you know. Yep, yep. So we're gonna do that for, and we're gonna get the grill going and then we'll be able to put these on and it'll be awesome. Yeah, excited? Was, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait. These all right. are going to be amazing. Let's get them on the Yoder. We'll be good to go. All right, George. So we got these ribs here. They've been on the smoker for about two and a half hours. Okay. Um, and we're getting a little bit of pecan smoke. I really like pecan. Mm -hmm. I think it gives really great color. It doesn't over smoke the rib, um, but you can see the color that these ribs have. They look fantastic. So we were cooking at about 275 degrees. And for you people out there, we're 275 degrees. And now we've got the color that we want. And you can see that that pliability, that oh, yeah. flexibility the ribs have. Yep. So after about that two and a half hours, um, and you can go to three max. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap these. And if you're doing a competition style rib, we're going to add some other flavors to it. So we're going to okay. take some, we're going to take some sugar in the raw, some turbinado sugar, and you can use brown sugar if you want to. But the thing about turbinado sugar is it doesn't burn. Um, it just gives you that flavor and that color, and it, it won't over caramelize. Okay. okay. We're going to take some butter. Um, you can use. Uh, sticks of butter, you can use uh, squeeze butter like this, um, but what you're doing is you're adding some oil, you're adding some fat to that, okay? Then we're gonna come in and we're gonna add some honey. Okay. Um, and this is a, a spicy honey, so it's gonna add just a little bit more mm. uh, punch to that, all right? And then lastly, we're gonna come in with some, a little bit of barbecue sauce, some blues hog raspberry oh, chipotle. Wow. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna kinda add some, add some uh, liquid here and flavor to this to this wrap and yeah. we're gonna put it bone side down like this. Okay. Okay. And the reason why we're doing that, if I flip this over, I'm gonna get too much going on on top of that meat side. And when I go to turn it in in the competition, Ooh. it could be too dark, it, you know, it's not gonna be appealing. So I see. we're gonna try to, and then, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do the same thing again on top. Now remember, there's gonna be a, you're gonna do this next, so. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm taking notes. Yeah, now we're gonna turn this the other way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap, we, we're two plying with the foil because we don't wanna lose all those, all that stuff we just put in there, right? So now we're gonna put this together, this guy, and we're gonna roll it, rolling this down like that, keeping it all sealed. And then once we get that now, we can go down tight. And then what we do is we take these, fold over and we, we fold it right into this and it becomes a handle. So you go like this. Uh huh. And so now you can, you can pick that up and bring this over, do the same thing. And so now we can pick the rib up and then I'm gonna go to these corners and I'm just gonna kind of turn them up so we don't lose any of that jus. And now I can pick my ribs up, I can put them on the pit and then we're gonna put them back on this pit and we're gonna, we're gonna probe them until they get to about 210 degrees internal. Okay. And they're ready to eat. All right, George, the ribs are done. We had them, we wrapped them. They stayed on for about another hour and 20 minutes or so. Um, we kind of bumped the heat up a little bit just because now we're trying to get heat. Um, we probed them. Uh, we probed them with our thermo pin, and we probed them to about 210 degrees internal. They felt really good when we were hitting the probe. So these ribs are done. We rested them for about 30 minutes. Yep. And so now we're gonna we're gonna open these wraps up, and we're gonna kind of see where we're at. And one thing uh -oh. I like to do. Oh, you're, you're opening mine up first. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous. That looks that looks pretty good. Yeah, that we're looks gonna pretty good. There's a, little, there's a little jus there. We'll just kind of turn that over and let it kind of get some of that in there. Let's get those ribs out. And you can see that, like you can see that color and we haven't even put sauce on it yet. Oh my gosh. But you can see the, see the bend. Yeah, it's flexible. See how it's almost breaking, breaking there, but it's almost, not. Almost, yeah. Almost. So what we're gonna do here, this is where it gets tricky. So we, we're going in between the bones here. Right. But in a competition, we wanna try to keep, we wanna try to keep our cuts straight instead of following the diagonal. Why is that? Because for presentation, we want them to look nice and straight and even. Gotcha. So if I can go from this bone to that bone like this, and I can keep that bone straight, then it's gonna have a much cleaner look when I put it in the boxes for the judges. And then this is also when you can tell kind of where your tenderness level is when you're hitting mm. with the knife. But we got nice straight bones. Those look pretty good. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slide these all over here and let these kind of chill out over here while we're slicing the other ones. Okay. And then we'll we'll pick our we'll pick our favorite one. I'll tell you what. I'll let you do the honors. This is our sweet dreams. Okay. Just give it a nice drizzle. Give them all a nice drizzle over the top. And then we're just gonna do this. 
this. Oh. Push them up like that. Go ahead. Finish them up. I mean, these look. Boom. These are these are picture perfect right here. I mean, these are. And then if we if we were doing a competition, we could pick out our favorite ones, right? We could pick out our favorite ribs, the ones that look the best together. And you, you have to turn in six uh, six bones, so we could find six that look really good together. Or you can go more than that if you want. Wow. Gonna, we'll do eight. We'll do eight like this. Perfect. And you can take those eight, and then you can do this. Wow. Put them in your turn-in box, and you got two slabs of ribs. Let's not wait anymore, man. Let's, let's, get, let's I can't. Let's, let's get in there. Let's get in there. Grab, a, grab one of those. I'll grab one of these. Now, as we were talking about earlier, we're looking for that perfect bite, right? Yes. We're looking for that perfect bite. So you want to go in there and see if you can take a bite and it doesn't move. Yours kind of came off. See that right there? Mm. <laughs> these what? are special. Wow. So right here at Proud Souls Kansas City, we got all these great products, including these uh, awesome ribs from Prairie Fresh, uh, the Kansas City Company, the Sweet Dream Sauce, all the rubs and sauces you need, the yoders to cook them on, and they turn out just like that. Fantastic. Hope you enjoyed it, George. These are, these are the best I've ever again. had. Wow. Come see us here at Proud Souls.